Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here and welcome to a brand new shader settings video. Right now I'm in my current hardcore world where I usually use complimentary reimagine unbound shaders. These right now are my favorite shaders to use, but I've used BSL in the past, complimentary and complimentary reimagined. Today I'm just going to be going through my current shader settings because it has been highly requested. I'm also just going to let you guys know the current mods that I'm using. So there's a couple that I use pretty frequently. I use sodium and indium as well as iris. These all help with the shaders and make it all look pretty nice and clean. I use the logical zoom as well as the free cam mod to take thumbnails. Also, the continuity mod makes all of the glass look good. Also, you can't forget about fabric API. If you're wondering where to get all of your shaders, I actually get most of mine from Modrin. Here goes nothing. Let's start going through these settings. Just in case you want to figure out how to get to the menu, hit video settings, shader packs, and then whichever shaders you'd like to tweak, just go ahead and click the shader pack settings. I am not going to be able to give you as much information as this information tab right here, so go ahead and click on that if you need the info. So the visual style is set to unbound, the profile is going to be set to high. Again, this is all just personal preference, so if you guys have anything that you want to throw out for any ideas, for any performance settings, or anything like that, feel free to throw them in the comment section. If we click on performance settings right here, I have basically everything set to medium except the texture filtering I do have set to off. Lock reflection quality is set to high and the shadow distance I have actually only set to 12 chunks. I do have it set to 12 chunks right now because I do have the real time shadows on and I just don't want it to lag. Now we're going to move on to lighting and if we go to lighting color multipliers, there's a couple things to show you here. So during the noon time when the sun is at the highest point in the sky, I actually did set the lighting intensity multiplier to 1.1. Other than that, no real changes to the sunrise and sunset or the nighttime or really the rainy and snowy weather. I like to have the shadow smoothing set to very smooth and the cave lighting I have set to bright. I do like having it set to bright so it's not so dark on streams. Moving down to the materials, we can go to the water and I have everything set to default. Underwater color, the red is down to 90, underwater blue is up to 110 and the underwater green is up to 110. Everything else is set to default but the underwater color. Next, we're going to move to the camera section here. We're going to click on color balance, and you can see at the top left, we have general brightness set to 2, contrast to brighter colors set to 1.85, and saturation set to 1, white brightness set to 1.8, contrast of darker colors set to 1.15, and saturation of paler colors set to 1.2. And then I did not do anything to the color grading. The bloom strength, or kind of the glow intensity, it is set to 65%. Now, if we go to the atmosphere, we have a couple things to click on. I'm actually gonna go to the sun and moon first. This is something that I change often. You might see the sun and the moon change angles in the sky. If you go 20, it's gonna be all the way to the south side. And if you go to negative 20, it's gonna be all the way to the north side. That's actually how you change the orientation of the sun and the moon. And that's always gonna be different depending on where I'm taking a thumbnail picture. I actually do have the rainbow set to after rain and the aurora set to every night. Aurora Borealis style is set to default style and the night star amount is set to medium. I keep the nebula brightness at 100 just because I think that looks great. Cloud altitude right now is at 192. And the fog, I do have the border fog on and cave fog on, but the atmospheric fog is set to very subtle. Now for the atmosphere in the nether, I did change a few things. We have color mode for biome based and the nether view limit set to 20 chunks. The nether storm is on, but I have the opacity set to 0.35 and the storm height at 220. Nether storm lower altitude is at 40, by the way. Last but not least, we do have the other tab here where there's a couple things you can click on. I actually went straight to the world outline when I started the world. I actually do have the world outline on and I don't have the dark outline, so it's kind of a brighter white outline that you see on all of the blocks. The brightness I have 1.1 and the thickness is just 1. It's kind of like the selection outline, but uh, these are actually just the settings for that. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, that is actually everything that I have changed with these shaders. So I'm going to hit done right there and we can get back into the world and everything's loading back in. I absolutely love these current settings, so if you guys have any cool ideas, let me know. Super glad I could finally get this video out, though, for the people that were looking for the information. I do want to say remember to take care of yourselves and do something nice for somebody if you haven't done so yet today. Thank you to all the Twitch subscribers. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud if you want to join anytime. Thank you to all the new YouTube members. Thanks for joining. Also, thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters. You guys rock. Anyways, guys, take care of yourselves. I will see you on the next video. Bye.